Hello, and welcome to another Analyst Angle. I'm Bob LaLiberté, Principal Analyst with theCUBE Research. Today, I'm joined by Ed Walton, CEO of STEP, Todd Kelly, the CTO of STEP, and Matt Addix, the Head of Product Marketing for Ericsson Enterprise 5G. Now, we're gonna discuss the role of private 5G in the enterprise with a focus on actual deployments. So, welcome, Ed, Todd, and Matt. Hey, Bob. Hello. Hey, Bob. Thanks for having us. Yeah, great to see everyone again. Glad this is a great topic we want to we really want to get started on. Um, you know, private 5G solutions have been talked about extensively in the media over the past couple of years, but now we're actually starting to see deployments happening. So I'm really looking forward to hearing about the conversation we have later about who's using private 5G, what are the use cases, you know, what challenges organizations run into, but also more importantly, what are the benefits that they're achieving? So I thought we could get started by first understanding really what's needed to put together uh, and deploy a private 5G solution into the enterprise. So Matt, I was hoping you could maybe walk us through the solutions that Ericsson Wireless puts out for private 5G for the enterprise. Well, I'm happy to. And I, and I think it's important for us to need to take a step back a little bit, right? And look at this as not just private 5G. Private 5G is absolutely an, an important component um, and a tool that an enterprise can use, but 5G in general, I think is, is where, where I would start, right? There's a lot of inherent benefits that come along with that and a lot of advantages that an enterprise can, can take advantage of along with that. And, and my, uh, my friends, Ed and, and, and Todd will take, talk a little bit more about how we, uh, how we implement those in, into customer environments, right? But at Ericsson here, we have, I, I would say three or actually four main components to our, um, enterprise wireless solutions, uh, portfolio and platform. So if we start on the private networking side, we have Ericsson Private 5G, which is a, 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 an industry best uh, solution that leverages uh, carrier spectrum and then also industry spectrum um, to uh, to really deploy and and, and uh, deploy these networks inside uh, and outside of, of any enterprise environment. Right. The, the main purpose of this solution is really to connect some of the most challenging environments on the planet. Right. If you think about it, uh, millions of square feet in a manufacturing facility or an offshore oil rig or a mine, whether it's open pit or, or in the ground, right? This is a purpose-built solution that, uh, that can be flexible enough to address all of the, uh, the unique challenges that those environments bring. Um, and it can scale up in a big way, but also it can scale down, right? It can scale down for some of these smaller, uh, smaller slates and smaller deployments that, um, that, that, that many uh, uh, enterprises really have, have today, right? Um, so we have a variant of that solution also which is our Ericsson Private 5G Compact solution. So this is a little bit of a simpler um, uh, part of the portfolio. It leverages a different radio architecture, very similar to Wi-Fi. And in fact, that's that's how we're, we're seeing a, a lot of our customers actually leverage this solution, is they want coverage, wireless coverage specifically, where cellular coverage specifically, where Wi-Fi can't reach, essentially. So there's a lot of outdoor storage lots and distributed enterprise um, customers that are leveraging this, where they have they might have multiple sites where they they need coverage for something as simple as a scanner, right? And that's where um, where the, where a compact uh, solution really comes into play. And then last but certainly not least, this is something that we introduced a couple of weeks ago there in Boston, uh, Bob, when we met. And this is our Ericsson Enterprise 5G coverage solution. So this is a turnkey new drop host solution that extends carrier coverage here in the United States for all three major um, carriers, right? So if, if you think about the venues today, there are some tier one venues like international airports and major, you know, major league baseball, you know, NFL stadiums. They're all covered pretty well by all of the major carriers. But there's a lot of other venues out there um, that might have been forgotten, right? Tier two, tier three venues or remote locations such as a warehouse and logistics center or a manufacturing facility. Um, and not having public carrier coverage can really be a significant challenge for them operationally, right? So a lot of times they'll want to use the public 5G network. For, from an operations perspective, but it also um, can enhance safety, right? I mean, think about if there's a disaster or right, right, injury um, and somebody can't call 911, that poses a problem and 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 certainly a liability for uh, for the for the uh, for the enterprise there as well, right? So to pull all this together, I mean, we have a suite of, of solutions that include essentially everything you need, including the radios, uh, all of the core networking infrastructure. Um, we have a security stack that we can overlay at the edge of the network there as well. And then on top of that, we also have um, our, our endpoint uh, solutions, our, our credit point solutions, where we can connect assets and, and people, places, and things there at the edge as well. 
right? So we have an end-to-end -end platform that uh, that our customers and our partners can really leverage to, again, connect some of those challenging places on our Yeah, that sounds absolutely great. And you're absolutely right to extend it. It's not just about the private 5G, that neutral host certainly plays a significant role. I think you've also got the fixed wireless access, which is also really picking up a lot of steam for 5G as well. So a lot of good points that you brought out about how organizations can take advantage of 5G from both a private network perspective, also from that fixed wireless access, and also from that neutral host perspective as well, to be able to extend the coverage of the major carriers into their environments as well. So. That was a great conversation. I'd like to jump over to you now, Ed, and have you talk a little bit about how STEP fits into this into this picture and what it is that you're doing to help enterprises accelerate the adoption of 5G solutions, whether it be private, fixed wireless, or neutral host. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for having us. And uh, as we talked about in Boston, it's an exciting time in the industry. And it's really cool for me because I came from Cradle Point. I ran channels there for 2014 throughout 2018 and 2018, 2019, started to build out enterprise sales in Central. And then I came over and became an owner and uh, CEO of Step. And within the Cradle Point ecosystem, we really expanded uh, what we were doing with Cradle Point into the Ericsson portfolio. And we're seeing uh, a revolution in connectivity. And we think we're just at the beginning of this. We've been doing private cellular deployments for roughly about three and a half years now across all vertical segments, but it's really picked up in a tremendous amount of momentum, certainly in manufacturing, warehouse, logistics, early in healthcare, stadiums, K-12, education, uh, airports. Uh, we've got deployments and proofs of concepts going in uh, across all those segments. And really what we do from a step standpoint is we help our customers uh, understand in what's possible. Uh, all of them are on an industry 4.0 or digital transformation journey, but quite honestly, they have fundamental connectivity issues that we help them embrace uh, a hybrid network, if you will. So most customers have heard about things like 5G, private cellular, may have heard about neutral hosts. They know they have connectivity issues, but they, they really don't know where to start. And what we do is we don't assume anything. We go in and we do surveys and audits and we look at the whole equation because we have built out uh, and we come from the traditional networking side, wire, wireless, NAC. Uh, we build out amazingly complex in the large environments. So we know that world very well. But we also know when we build out a robust cellular practice, we help our customers uh, embrace things like neutral hosts, radio dot solution from Ericsson, large private cellular, EP5G, uh, the compact solution. Uh, really the whole uh, spectrum of connectivity that also integrates with that traditional underlying network and then wrap with security and inflexible com consumption models. So really what we're doing is, is understanding where our customers are, what they're trying to do, where they have pain today, and then helping them build a carrier grade enterprise network that we can help them and supplement uh, their current staff and supporting. Awesome. That sounds great. And I don't know, Todd, you're on as well. Is there anything that you'd like to add to that as well? Yeah, I guess in the context of this conversation, I, I get involved with the deployments and we're a very engineering focused uh, integrator, main service provider. And what we've uh, seen, I'd like to highlight is, is a customer uh, Toyota material handling, um, which kind of embraced multiple aspects of this hybrid network approach. And the reasons why, uh, you know, they were, they were looking to embrace this hybrid approach is because their traditional Wi-Fi network wasn't performing, wasn't as reliable as they would like it to be. And um, so they were having several issues with that. They were having several issues with just getting cellular connectivity for communication with their executives, partners, consultants, as well as enabling cellular connectivity on their material handling uh, trucks and getting that to be activated and, and run efficiently. So we came in, like Ed said, did a full analysis, helped them optimize their Wi-Fi network for where it needed to be, but also layered in a private cellular network. The results of this uh, afterwards, uh, you know, reduced some of their overtime hours in their parts picking facility by 50%, improved their morale. And some of the challenges they were having is just fast moving vehicles with scanners and Wi-Fi doesn't do very well with fast mobility, doesn't do very well in very large open or indoor areas, especially when things are changing. And what we're seeing, and we saw at Toyota and as well as other customers, 
these environments aren't just static, set a wireless infrastructure and it'll work. It, the environment's always changing. Different liquids are going on, different shelving, things are moving around, and then they are using automation, robot. And that's the other thing we saw at Toyota is they invested millions of dollars in these AMRs, automated uh, mobile robots. They were just sitting there because they would kind of start and stop and not work everywhere. So that's the other a layered in, uh, use case onto this private 5G infrastructure from Ericsson that they're able to leverage to start taking advantage of automation, improve their what's called operational OEE metrics and be more efficient and uh, more reliable. They also save tens of millions of dollars in downtime since they've implemented this infrastructure. Um, the last thing I'll kind of highlight, Bob, is that, you know, we were, uh, we like to validate things with our customers. So we've, we started doing a lot more testing the before and after. In this case, we went after into this uh, Toyota infrastructure and tested the Wi-Fi versus uh, private 5G uh, performance. And what we found, uh, you know, is they had about 40 APs in this one building, 180,000 square foot building. And we put in two microcells from Ericsson to do this private 5G. Their jitter, uh, we did about 19 test points, uh, four tests per test point on a live network. And we saw jitter near zero constantly with uh, the private 5G. With Wi-Fi, we saw variances up to even 15 seconds. And it looks like a sawtooth uh, chart if you if we were to show that. Same thing with out-of-order packets uh, and lost datagrams with constant performance on private 5G and Wi-Fi. And this is a lightly loaded network. And one of the things people start to realize is start to digitize their business like the Toyotas is the more things you start to layer on a Wi-Fi network, no matter how well designed it becomes, it is contention based. And so, and the clients control how, when they roam and connect. So that's kind of some of the limitations of Wi-Fi as you start to have more sensors uh, and scale, you're digitizing your business, the infrastructure starts to not be able to handle it. And that's what we're starting to see in these use cases. And then obviously it enables a lot more reliable connectivity and quality of service so you can partition it to each use case and uh, both indoors and outdoors. So the um, the third part of that equation was a private cellular or public cellular connectivity, Bob. So we layered in the uh, neutral host solution and within record time, I think that was probably within six months from start to finish, layered in all three networks, their cellular connectivity uh, indoors and across their campus is now solid. And um, and we're actually managing part of that infrastructure for them. Awesome. Well, that, that sounds like a pretty comprehensive solution. Just to clarify for this, was this all indoors or was it an indoor and outdoor facility? And were they using Wi-Fi for all of that prior to? And then they switched. They need. They knew they needed something more, more robust and greater coverage. So they went to that private five G. And then once they saw the five G, that's when they said, "Hey, can you help us extend the all of the, the the cellular companies, right? The the three major cellular companies into their environment as well." Yeah, they. Well, it was um, an ideation session. We prioritized use cases, you know, based on pain and. Uh, and business value. So there's layered uh, use cases to get to the outdoor environment. Um, so as they transition parts into their raw manufacturing facility where raw steel comes in and these beautiful, uh, you know, uh, material handling forklifts and stuff come out the other side, they want to have a seamless experience. So that is a, one of the use cases we're going to be transitioning them to. But we started with the ones I just mentioned, starting to solve their coverage on your shop floor for the AMRs, and we'll be layering in some of these other use cases for indoor, outdoor, seamless connectivity um, as well. So it's it's usually that's the way we see these deployments going is let's start with a few pain points that you have and then layer on the additional use cases as we go. And it there is a dependency on the endpoints too and what the use case is. Most of the endpoints uh, use like 870, maybe 165 uh, endpoints that been through the ongo alliance. These are endpoints that can connect directly to a private 5G network, and that keeps growing over time. But most of the since iPhone 13 and maybe even before that, you know, devices have that capability. And if they don't, there's gateway solutions like from Cradle Point that that we can put in there. So um, that was a kind of a separate network to get to your last part of your question. Then the neutral host solution that we put in, and the neutral host was very quick because it uses Cat6 cabling. Uh, right, just like an AP deployment. So it's very quick to deploy, just a lot of time in engineering that so it complies with all the 
carrier guidelines and strict requirements on power. Excellent. That's great. So awesome to hear about that use case. And I know we've been talking about more and more, and I know you can't talk a lot of the companies consider it a, um, you know, a competitive advantage to have this, so they don't want their names out there. I'm wondering if you can just talk about volume, whether it's percent growth, how much more private 5G are you seeing in 2024 than you saw in 2023? How real is the adoption of this? We see, I would, I would say it's growing rapidly. And then we've been doing this for three and a half years and we thought it was going to rain private cellular, you know, back then, Yeah. but we're really seeing now today. And, and I would say the increase in conversations, pipeline proofs of concept, and it's really being driven by, you know, we see manufacturing warehouse logistics really leading the way and they've got all the use cases, you know, AI, robotics, uh, digital twins, take your pick. None of that doesn't mean anything, and and it's you can't realize that investment or ROI if you don't have secure, reliable connectivity. So where we're putting these in, like a Toyota and so forth, it's transformative almost immediately. I mean, the outcome base uh, value here is immense. So I think as they've gotten started, we've already seen four or five, you know, from a manufacturing standpoint in the same sector follow suit and we've deployed a very large 5 million square foot facility in the same state right up the road and so forth going down the same path but now we're seeing it we did a stadium um, where they were deploying the biometric authentication to get in just like clear at the airport on an ipad really cool solution but they couldn't deploy it on their wi-fi network we built out a private cellular network boom it worked day one and now they're to todd's point you get the first use case now they're moving all sorts of things and applications and charging and video and all that. All the operational technologies are going over on the private cellular network. And then that's bringing bandwidth back to the traditional network. Um, we just did a, uh, uh, we, we do festivals and we actually have a cellular on wheels, a cow. I'm from Wisconsin. So we painted this, we wrapped this thing actually like a Wisconsin cow. It's got a no tipping sign on it. And we power all the connectivity for the Bardstown Bourbon Festival in Kentucky. And there's about 60 distillers there, very high-end festival, and bourbon's a $9 billion industry in Kentucky. Um, all these bourbon distillers are looking now, hey, I'm putting in, you know, NFT techs, QR codes, uh, I have inventory management systems, and we're going back and we're actually now connecting those uh, rickhouses and, and, you know, manufacturing operations with a hybrid network. And actually, the Whiskey House uh, did a tour, and I think there's some bunch of articles coming out on it. That's one of the most technology advanced distilling operations in the world. Uh, first contract distilling outside of Bardstown, that's a hybrid network. And it's mind blowing what they're doing in there, but it's all about the data, uh, heat, temperature, humidity, sensors, everything throughout the whole distilling process, but then connectivity for the users, people coming through, contractors. And they understood the concept from the get go of not just disrupting and reinventing and doing distilling in a different manner and leveraging data and connectivity and technology, but everything else about the operations there is on a hybrid network. And so um, they have goals that they're achieving now. Uh, we're seeing the real you know, outcomes and ROIs from this. And, and this is across all vertical segments. So when you, what we're seeing is really this uptick that we think it's gonna be exponentially much, much bigger in 2025. And we're really at the start of this growth curve and it could go for quite some time. But the adoption of the hybrid network and the understanding of the value and benefits of that, that's what we're talking about every week with a new client. And then we're taking them through those uh, real world scenarios that uh, Todd was articulating that we're seeing with Toyota and others. Awesome. One thing I would one thing I would actually add to, to Ed's comments, so echo, echo all of Ed's comments. The other thing I would add that we're seeing globally as well is there's a lot of customers that are, you know, they're doing their initial uh, uh, commercial deployment, just as that described, but they're using that initial site as a blueprint, right? Because a lot of these organizations, they have multiple sites, right? So they want to see the ROI for that initial site. They want to make sure that they, they've determined all of the, the key use cases that are the lowest hanging fruit for them to drive some, you know, some, some business outcomes. And then they're going to rinse and repeat, replicate that site over site, over site, over site, right? And that's where partners like step coming to help them, to consult with them on, on, on what that strategy should look like. 
and then uh, organizations, you know, such as Ericsson that that have the scale and, and the solutions that can support those global global um, distributed enterprise type environments there as well. Yeah, no, I think I think that makes a lot of sense, and it's certainly I mean, you don't typically find a lot of private five G or five G experience at all inside an enterprise, right? They're mostly dealing with the Wi Fi and the WAN and and things like that. So having a trusted partner who can come in and walk you through that process and help accelerate the process is certainly going to help. I know for one, I think all the stuff at Toyota and some of the other sounds great, but I, I definitely want to sign up for one of those bourbon distilleries and go and get a, get a tour of that. I think that's definitely on the bucket list to make sure I go, I, we need to check out that 5G network. Uh, Let's take a lot of gas on the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, that, and I've seen the cows. Those things are great to be able to spin up cellular cellular connectivity wherever you are, I think is, is fascinating as well. So it's great. And I'm glad you painted it like a cow as well, because that's what everyone refers to them as. Uh, one last thing before we go, just want to get your take and it's come out somewhat in the conversation we've heard, you know, this, they had five, they had wireless, but they went to private 5g, but it's that then freed up the, the wireless network and so forth. Everyone talks about hell, is 5g going to replace Wi-Fi? will Wi-Fi beat 5g. Is it going to be complimentary? Just want to do a quick round across all three of you. Where do you see the future for 5G and Wi-Fi? So we'll start with you, Ed, and then go to Matt and then Todd. Yeah, it's it's not an either or. It's an and. It's completely complementary. Think of a hybrid network just like your iPhone or Android device in your pocket. Uh, you got multiple connectivity options, Wi-Fi, cellular, near technology, Bluetooth. The hybrid environment, um, there are certain applications and services and mission critical things. You know, it's the right connectivity for the right service application device. So it's it's definitely complementing both. Next. Echo as comments, the use case, the use case will drive which technology you use, but I think they're all here to stay for sure. Right. I think that, you know, 5G has its benefits. Um, some of them being coverage, right? You get more coverage uh, generally with a, with a, a 5G radio than you would a, a normal kind of Wi-Fi access point. Mobility, Todd mentioned that that earlier. Highly mobile applications. Um, I lean in towards the uh, towards the, the cellular side of things. Um, and then there's reliability. So Todd talked about the jitter side of things. There's you know also something very, very impactful around predictable low latency, right? For some of these applications and some of these environments as well. So all of that comes into play. The use case will absolutely dri drive and dictate what wireless technology that the enterprises are, are, are using. I, I have nothing much more to add than that. It, it's the fact. Um, We've seen some really cool, I mean, we're uh, Wi-Fi radio heads and um, as well as cellular. And, and we've seen real, really good Wi-Fi tight designs and manufacturing and where they're high availability, very tight, power optimized. And even there, they're still having these same problems. So there is a complementary aspect um, for, and it depends on the use case um, and don't see it going away. Wi-Fi also seems to in most cases have a lot more throughput uh, if it's designed right and um, relative to, to depends on how much spectrum and how much usage you get on cellular right now. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it is complimentary. There's hundreds of thousands, I think, of devices that support Wi-Fi. But if you have any of those problems where you need to cover large outdoor or indoor areas, you need deterministic performance and reliability, um, and, or you have a lot of mobility that's where cellular, private cellular would overlap with it. And now the price point, like with Ericsson, with their compact 5G, we can come in with very cost-effective solutions um, in the carpeted space as well as, you know, the cement space on a, on a floor. So it's, it is a complementary approach. That's why we say it's a hybrid network. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that was great. Thank you. Every, you guys heard it here first. It's Wi-Fi is here. It's going to be complimentary. There's going to be hybrid networks. I think that, I think that uh, rings true for most people that are watching this as well. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's just indicative of where the technology It's very hard to fully replace one technology with another. There's always going to be overlap. There's going to be specific use cases for each one, but really appreciate your input. And thank you for all your time today. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have. So I want to thank all of you for, for joining me today. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Yeah. And thank all of you for watching this Analyst Angle on exploring the private 5G deployments and use cases. For more information on Ericsson Wireless Solutions and Step Services and Solutions for Private 5G, please visit their website.